Hey guys, so in this video we're going to look at uh, physics in Unity, particularly colliders and triggers, and we're going to take that as an opportunity to also look into the lighting system of Unity. So Unity is, as a game engine, is not just about graphics and rendering, but also about physics, about making things behave realistically, um, falling into one another, uh, cloth physics, ragdoll physics, all these things. But because it's kind of like um, expensive and computationally expensive to do those physics, they exist in two different systems. So we're going to see how we can use um, this physics system to make objects interact realistically within each, uh, between each other. And we're going to start with rigid bodies. So we're going to open, open up the Unity Hub, create a new project. I'm going to call day four physics. Click create. And now that we have our Unity project loaded, we're going to start looking into rigid bodies. And those rigid bodies are basically a component which you add onto a game object and makes Unity compute physics for this game object. Let's look at an example. We're going to create a new cube. Cube is in front of our camera. It's beautiful. And we're going to go and add a component called rigid body. So I search here at the top, rigid, and I found rigid body. And we start to see a bunch of different um, attributes like mass, drag, angular drag, use gravity. So all of these are related to, um, to physics. And if I click play, the cube falls. The cube falls because we're using gravity. So what do we want to do if we don't want the cube to fall? Um, the non-realistic version is to tick off use gravity. And so we press play. And the cube is still somewhat reacting to physics, but is not using gravity. If we want to do the realistic version, we're going to create an object below the cube. We're going to create a plane, move it a little bit down by changing the Y component. And we're going to click play. And our cube still doesn't move because I forgot to take back use gravity. So now I want the gravity to um, activate and the cube falls. Great. The cube falls for two reasons. It falls because we use the gravity and then it stops falling because it um, comes across a collider. So we have um, our cube has a box collider, our plane has a mesh collider, and Unity has a rule that if anything has a rigid body and then counters anything else with a collider, then there will be a collision. And it does it somewhat realistically. So let's say I want to change the rotation of my cube to make it a little bit more funky. And I press play. It's going to fall realistically. This is all you need to know in order to have um, colliders and rigid bodies, right? We could go a little bit further, add a new game object with a sphere, move the sphere a little bit to the side, make sure that the sphere has a sphere collider, and we could even push our cube around. Let's see how this looks like. We bring the sphere down a little bit, and then we move the position And we're not actually pushing that cube because we're um, changing those values. And it's an interesting thing, right? If we're changing those values like this, there's um, something to know about the Unity physics engine is that if you miss the, the sort of window or frame of collision, then the object is going to go through the other object and no collision is going to happen. So if you see, if I try to move like very slowly, then I can actually like move the cube. Sometimes it doesn't go through. So that's something to know about collisions in general, is that it's possible that you might miss them at some point. That's an issue that we come into, and once you get into this issue, we can, we can discuss how to deal with it. So this is how we deal with colliders and 
rigid bodies. This is how we can start making floors, walls, roofs, all of our environment and have a, a realistic physics system. There's, an, there's, a component, there's a field in the component, in the collider component, um, that's called trigger. What triggers do is that they allow us um, to detect events and act on these events. So they're kind of like invisible colliders. They know when, some, when things are coming into contact, but they're not visible and they don't stop us, but it allows us to sort of like create reactive zones, so to speak. So let's see how we could do that. We could put a new empty game object, and all we're going to do is add a box collider, and we're going to make this box collider into a trigger. I'm going to go into my scene view so we can see the box collider. I double click here on the left to zoom into it, and if I move, I see this green thin line. That's my box collider. So I'm going to start by renaming this object into, let's say, like reactive space. I'm going to move it a little bit further so we're towards the right of the of the plane. And in the size, I can change the size of the of the box collider. So I could say, let's make it a little bit thinner, but taller and a lot deeper. So if I go through um, if I go through this collider, I can still um, transverse it because it is um, um, because it is set as trigger. So I could go through the same way that um, I would move the sphere, move around, and there's no problem. The sphere doesn't stop. There's no glitch. Nothing. But there is some sort of trigger, and to sort of catch that event, to catch the moment where we're going inside the trigger, we need to add a script. And I'm going to say, like, reactive manager, create an add, it adds it as a component, I'm going to double click on the component to open Visual Studio Code. And the same way that we've seen that there's a void start, void update, these are built-in functions that Unity knows how to call, we can do void on trigger enter. And as an argument, it takes a collider because it, something needs to enter the trigger. And this is going to be called whenever Unity calculates that an object with a, uh, a rigid body enters our, um, our trigger. So for now, we're just going to say debug.log triggered. I'm going to go back to the editor and let's see how it goes. So I'm going to start by taking the cube and moving the cube across. And then I've moved it for, uh, further enough and I see in the console triggered. So if I move it back and move it back again, triggered again and triggered again. Now if I take the sphere and if I move the sphere across, Nothing triggers. Nothing triggers because we don't have a rigid body. For any physics interaction, at least one of the two objects need to have a rigid body. The sphere doesn't have a rigid body, our reactive space doesn't have a rigid body, and therefore there's no interaction. But say our sphere has a rigid body. I'm going to add a component, rigid body. Oh, I said 2D, I need to put 3D one. I have a rigid body and I'm going to actually not use gravity. I just want it to keep on floating. I'm going to click play. And now if I move the sphere again, now I have trigger. So now both the cube and the sphere can trigger an event. So we need to keep track of what can of uh, which one is which. Because sometimes we want the cube to create one thing and we want the sphere to create something else. To do that, we can access the call argument here. And a collider belongs to a transform. A transform belongs to a game object. This is how we can get our game object. So we can say game object triggering equals call transform game object. And I can say here 
put the debug log afterwards, triggered by, and I'm gonna add triggering dot name. I save it, I go back to Unity, and let's see what happens. I take my cube, and move the cube to the right, and it says, triggered my cube. If I take my sphere, take my sphere to the right, triggered by sphere. So with the same space, we can now determine different things um, happening based on which object are triggered us, are triggering us. We have on trigger enter. We also have things like on trigger exit. We've been inside a trigger, but we're leaving the zone. And on trigger stay, which uh, happens every frame that an object is within a particular trigger. These are the three main ones: trigger enter, trigger exit. Let's write them on trigger exit on trigger stay. And you would write them the same way that you would do that. So now we've looked into how triggers work, we've seen how colliders work. The last thing we're going to do is that we want to do something interesting with those triggers. And so to do that, we're going to add lights. Right? And so lights in Unity come in different forms and shape. They can come as components, they can come as ambient, and they can be part of the skybox. Actually, they can come as environments. I think that's the new terminology. So let's go back to Unity and do a little bit of um, light tests. The first thing we want to do is we want to get rid of... No, we want to look at the sun. This is what we want to do. Every time that we um, open a new project, you've noticed there's a main camera and there's a directional light. And a directional light mimics the position of the sun. If you're in an outside room or an outside space, um, this is what will dictate the main shadows of your space. So if I move it around, doesn't really make that much of a difference because this, the sun is so far away. What does make a difference is if you start rotating it. So I'm going to click on the rotate tool at the top left. And I'm going to start rotating the sun and you see how the shadows are rotating as well. Okay. And then Unity added something very cool is that if you start rotating on the x-axis then there's basically some sort of sunset happening. Nighttime, sunrise, and sunset. Or rather, like noon. But let's assume that for now, we are inside a closed space. So if we're inside a closed space, we don't actually have a directional light. I'm going to delete this guy. And everything shuts down. No more sun, everything is dark. To pretend that we're in a, um, in a uh, closed space, I'm also going to add a couple of walls. I'm gonna add a new cube here. Move it there. Stretch, stretch. Oops. Move it to the other side. And third one. Duplicate. Rotate it 90 degrees and put it behind us. Up. So now I'm seeing it in the orthogonal view and I move things so that they, there's no gap. I still have this sort of like skybox behind me. Um, if I add a new light by going to light, directional light, bam, now our walls are back. But for now, we're going to add a small light so we can play around with um, two other aspects the skybox and the ambient lighting. I'm going to go to a game object, light, 
and we're just going to add a point light for now. And a point light, as it says, is a light that is basically a point. Um, and in our case, it's right at the middle, and illuminates are seen this way. So maybe I want to put it in a little bit in the corner, so it's dramatic backlighting. Actually, let's make it closer to us so we can see our objects. And in our light component, we can change um, different aspects of the range, how far it actually lights, lights up. We can change the intensity, how bright it is. Um, and we can, we can change whether or not it casts shadows. In our case, we're going to have soft shadows. And it calculates the shadows of the cube and the sphere. As I move my light around, the shadows move as well. So that's the first aspect of light, is light as a component. You can have a point light, you can have a directional light, and finally a spotlight. Spotlight would be game object, light, spotlight. That spotlight, as it says, is just basically a spot. So let's try and move it so that we can see Hmm. Yeah, here it is. Let's put it just on top of our cube. Make it a little bit wider so it covers the cube better. And now we have our spotlight plus our point light. These are the three kinds of components, three main kinds of components. Spot, directional, and point. Another aspect is the lighting panel that involves the skybox and what we call the ambient lighting. So if you go to Window, Rendering, and Lighting, it opens up a new panel, which I'm going to put there so we can see what we're looking at. And in Environment, we can have different kinds of light. And we can see Environment Lighting. What is the source of the Environment Lighting and what is the intensity? So higher the intensity, the more sort of like default light you will get. Um, and let's say I want to start with color. And it, it's, when I set color, it sets the base base light as this particular color. If I put pink here, then everything is going to have a slightly like pinkish tone. I could put it there. Then I would um, make the Intensity multiplier. Hmm. No, I guess in this case we have to de to decide that the the pink is actually gray. So if we put it to black, it's almost unnoticeable. But I want to have a, like a slight hue of pink. And we could go all around the spectrum like this, and it gives like slightly different um, ambiences. To your scene. Finally, if I don't want to have a skybox, um, what I can do is I want to go to the camera and I want to say the, the clear flag of the camera, don't show the skybox, just show color. And it's going to default to a completely blank blue color. I'm going to set it as black. So now we're only really focusing on our scene right there. So this is a quick overview of um, how those uh, how the lighting works. Let's see how we can trigger some lights, um, but with those triggers. Surprise! Let's say we want if the sphere is going somewhere, if it's going close enough to our reactive space, if it's going to the right to our reactive space, we want to turn on the spotlight. So the first thing is that we're going to start with the start with spotlight turned off. So we deactivate the component here. And we're going to go back to our code, and we're going to say whenever we enter, we're going to, we're going to turn it on. And so to turn it on, we want to check this little checkbox here. This checkbox is part of a component called light, which is part of a game object called spotlight. So first we need to find the game object. Game object find. The name is spotlight. Then we need to get its component. The component is called 
light and we set it to enabled equals true. We go back, we press play. And now as we move this here, it's a nice shadow reflection. Bam, we've triggered and the spotlight on the cube has turned on. So this video has shown how light can come in different forms and shape, how we can use spotlights, point lights, um, environmental lighting, directional lighting to create different kinds of ambi ambiences and atmospheres, um, how we can make those ambi ambiences dynamic by turning on lights, uh, maybe by uh, changing the, the overall setup of the, and the spatial layout of the application, and also how this triggers the right from colliders, and colliders and rigid bodies as the physical behavior, the realistic physical behavior between different objects. This was physics, colliders, triggers and lights.